Okay, well this is Jay um, here and I'm doing the promised little biochar video on biochar and how it works within forest gardening. Um, this is a current picture off my back porch of the forest garden here and uh, well for real a solid two-year effort from from just rough brush. Um, obviously you can see stuff's pretty healthy. It's pretty verdant out here. Um, have had really no trouble. It's a, the forest uh, mixture of planting is sweet potatoes and a variety of taros, you know, a lot of hibiscus for bee fodder, that kind of thing. Recently put in a lot of um, poa berries, citrus fruit, various stuff of that nature. Uh, but it, it goes pretty well. Heavy top dressing of biochar and all of this, uh, it's really made a big difference. I have added some trace minerals on site. Uh, a little fertilizer, but by and large very very little. It just really hasn't required it uh, Anyway, that would be the first little clip hang in there Okay, so this this little patch I've got here is about a hundred feet Well more like 200 feet further back in the jungle. It's fenced off uh, It's behind the concept garden and you'll see that this is all burned down to bare soil at this point And of course we've got the little excavator chickens out here working over it pretty well um, at this point, this is what I would call a colonization, colonization phase of the forest. Uh, you plant a lot of big legume trees like the uh, koa here, get some bananas in to start building some biomass and some root structure. Of course, you get the sweet potatoes in, and the chickens do a pretty good job of inoculating all the charcoal in the soil. Um, this process takes about, no, oh, I don't know, six or eight months to complete, but it'll start to look like the previous cut here. Um, at the end of that. Once once the sweet potatoes get established and once the poa berries and the citrus fruit really take off then you know you're back at it. So anyway that that would be phase two. Alright now we're back to the nut of the issue. Um, at this point I'm actually doing what we call slash and char agriculture. This is uh, completely virgin back here. This has been cut um, within the last a month or so in between various projects. You'll see I have a charcoal fire here going on the ground right now. Um, I do at this point have a few trees established just because I had some extras to put in. I mean there's a, a good sized established koa back in there and a couple of bananas but by and large it's in a wild state. You, you, you come in here you cut the large dead snags drag them out and by the time you've got that stuff hacked up uh, you're gonna have most of the uh, you know, smaller brush and the fern, staghorn fern waste, pretty well compacted down. Don't worry about raking it up or anything. Just leave it on the ground. You're going to plant um, sweet potatoes right over the top of that. And when the sweet potatoes get their canopy established, yeah, a little breadfruit there. Uh, when the sweet potatoes get their canopy established, they'll keep it so moist underneath um, their foliage that all this fern stuff will break down. So there's no sense in spending a bunch of time trying to compost it up. All right, now we're going to talk about charcoal in particular. All right, um, here's my charcoal fire. Now you'll note that if you looked at other people building charcoal out on the web or seen other video, you'll see that my uh, process here looks suspiciously like a bonfire, as it has been said. And there's a reason for that. Um, you know, I came out here in the forest with the idea that I was going to attempt to make terra preta soils. Um, and I, you know, I went after the pit idea and the mound idea and I just didn't have enough soil to pull that off. I've tried the whole bit with uh, the barrel and that sort of thing and of course that works. And finally it dawned on me that the people that were building this stuff out in the rainforest in the jungle initially didn't use any of that. They didn't have barrels there in the same spot I had. They weren't digging pits in a jungle rainforest soil because the second it rains the fire goes out. And the charcoal that they were using was really a product and a byproduct of cooking fires. I mean, clearly, that was really the only answer. The, the kind of wood that they used was big chunks. They didn't have any means of processing it into little chunks. And if I was going to try to duplicate what they did, it would be intelligent for me to try to do exactly what they did. And that's what I'm doing here. This is the result. This would be phase one. I've just got a fire going. Uh, but in about two hours, I'm going to be back, and I'll show you what it looks like next. Okay, so here we are, um, pretty much cooking along. Um, at this point, I mean, the fire is producing really pretty well. Um, at this rate of burn, I don't know if you can get a real good sense of scale off of the uh, 
off of the camera here. Uh, but that, that fire is about three and a half feet wide, about two feet tall. Um, any bigger than that gets hard for one man to manage because you've got to pay some attention to keeping it all closed up. Um, and if you get a lot bigger than that, it gets so hot that it's hard to even approach and tend with a shovel. So it's pretty well human scale at that point, and I, I would suggest kind of trying to keep it under control. So it's the conditions right now for doing this aren't really ideal. Um, I like actually, you know, nice still weather and a light, 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 light mist, I guess, rain, because it kind of keeps the thing cracked down. And a light mist will also kind of help to scrub some of the smoke out of the air, which actually has some valuable hydrocarbons in it that are good for the soil anyway. So, uh, so the conditions aren't really great right now. It's a little windy. Windy isn't good because it has a tendency to make a lot of ash and not so much charcoal, but, but all in all, it's going to work out all right. Um, you know, by this method, you know, in bad conditions, you're going to get about a 15% yield. And I would guess probably in good conditions, you'll get a 25% yield if you know what you're doing. Uh, so you can actually return a pretty significant amount of carbon to the soil. And, uh, you know, that's, that's all right. Um, uh, all in all, when you look at the method, considering you can do it on site, considering you can do it pretty well adjacent to where you cut the material. You don't have to transport, you don't have to process, you don't have to do anything like that. I think I actually cradled a grave, just straight up slash and char like this is probably the most efficient and like carbon neutral uh, method of making charcoal out there.